Hi everyone, welcome back to Excel for Beginners and I'm recording this additional video today because I forgot my own brief. I forgot that it was Excel for Beginners. I got carried away in the episode I did of five where we had lots of charts and graphs and I think I showed you too much stuff and overwhelmed some people. So I'm gonna strip it all the way back to the basics and start again and show you some very simple charts and hopefully get you going starting to visualize your data because data is so cool and we want to be able to see what's going on a picture tells a thousand words and this is what charts and graphs do you can start to share your insights with friends family colleagues whoever you're doing these spreadsheets for to be able to show them what's going on with the data one word about Google Sheets. So Excel and Google Sheets are actually quite different when it comes to making charts and graphs. I'm going to be focusing on Excel today. If you would like me to do something on Google Sheets, perhaps that's something I can do in the future. Drop a comment and let me know if that's something that you would like to see. Stay tuned to the end for my excellent tip of the week and also just a note on video quality just to make sure that you are able to see the whole video and what's going on and the details of the spreadsheet and things. If you click on the little cog item on this video and then choose video quality, choose the highest number and that will make sure that you can see exactly what's going on. Any questions as always, please leave me a comment, ask questions. I just want to know how you're getting on with Excel and please ask me anything you need. First of all, a watch out when it comes to making charts and graphs in Excel. Excel wants your data to already be summarized when you make the chart, when you make the graph. It wants to know the exact data that you want to put in. The example we've been looking at in previous weeks has lots and lots of different lines of data. It's not summarized and it's not ready to be used in Excel to make a chart. Check out the bonus video I did, the sum if video, that will allow you to summarize your data. That's one way of summarizing the data so that Excel can then chart it. And that's the format that it wants it in. So I'm gonna switch tracks slightly on this video and use a different example for data that's already been summarized to show you exactly how to do charts. Okay. The first chart I want to show you is a line chart. A line chart is used to show how data changes over time. And we have here the pineapple market size volume in the UK and how that is predicted to change over the years. So we have the date here, 2023, 2024 and so on. And then the thousand metric tons that is predicted that the UK will want in pineapples. So we're going to chart this by what we do, first of all, Select the data that you want to show in the chart and then we go to insert and we're going to choose this one, which is a line chart. It says use this chart type to show trends over time. Great. That's what we want to do. So click that and there's different types you can do. And as you hover over, you can see that it appearing below and what it's going to look like. I quite like the ones where it has the markers. They're called the little blobs on each part of the data. So I'm going to select that. And you think, what's going on? Why is it plotted two lines? And you can see that it says date on this blue line. So it's trying to plot date. Why would you do that, Excel? Sometimes Excel is so clever. Sometimes it is not as clever. And then it's got the UK uh, data, which is what we want plotted along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and say, we don't want that, Excel. Why have you put that in there? And I'm just going to press delete on my keyboard. You can see it's gone away and now we can see that UK data, which is what we want. And um, I also wanted to show you that when we put these charts in, these extra ribbons appear. So you've got chart design here and format here. If I click off the graph, they disappear. If I click it again, they reappear. So one thing that's a problem now with this chart that we've made is that this, these labels along the bottom, this axis as it's called, like, why is it showing one, two, three, four, five? And it's because Excel doesn't understand that we want the dates to be shown here. This is the 2023 number, 2024, and so on. The way to fix that is you go to this select data button here, and it says change the data range included in the chart. So I'm going to click on that. And it's saying, you can see the chart data range that has been included. It says B3 to B8, and you can see what's been selected over here. And then it says the series that's been selected, and that's great. We've got UK, 
but it's this bit that's not working. It says the axis labels. So sometimes Excel knows what it's doing and it's so clever and it puts the right labels in. Sometimes it doesn't as much. And this is how you fix that. So you're going to press edit here. And then it says, where do you want this label range to be? And you can just select it on the chart, on the sheet. So I've gone down, selected those, and you can see it's automatically appeared. Press OK here, OK again, and you can see that it's done it. So that has done a line chart for you. I'm going to look at some different data now to look at a bar chart. Today we're going to cover line charts, bar charts, and pie charts. So here this data we have is the top 10 global pineapple producers. So we looked at the UK demand on one side and now let's look at who is producing pineapples around the world. So you've got country along here and then how much they're producing here. I'm going to select that data and I'll press insert and I'm going to go and show you a bar chart. It says insert column or bar chart. So I'm going to click here and let's have a 2D column. You can see it immediately appears and you can hover over and see which ones you like and it will show you what's going to appear. I'm going to just choose this first one here. So you can see again it's showing you what data is being used and it is showing you these additional ribbons as well at the top. And I just wanted to show you as well you can choose these different styles. If you hover over it shows you what it's going to look like and you can choose the style that you like. It also has change colours here if you don't like the blue. See what else it's got. It's got this one that's uh, red or orange and you can start to play and this is something that I really want you to do is to start to develop your own style and everything is customizable in Excel. We don't want to accept the default. We want to have our own style, our own way of showing things and then that shows that the effort that you've put in into what you want to communicate. There's nothing worse than having those default charts that you think well, someone hasn't put the effort in to make it show what I want to show, to make it have its own style and its own way of exploring the data and communicating the data. So let's show a little bit more of the customizing that you can do on this graph. One thing that straight away doesn't look quite right, it says the, the title that's here is says production thousand metric tons. Well that doesn't really mean anything when you show it to people. So I'm going to select this title here and I'm going to select the text and let's call it uh, top 10 global pineapple producers. The other thing that you can do is you can change the font. So if you just go to home and this is where the font bit is and I like poppins, I always use poppins and that's the rebel branding. So I'm going to choose poppins and you can see automatically it has changed here. Another thing you can do is if we go back to chart design, it has this add chart element here. So you can click on that and you can add all sorts of different things. So you could have axis titles. Maybe you want to label what the what the axis is. So if I select that and it says axis title, clearly we need to change that to something more meaningful. So I've select that and I'm going to say that that's country. And another thing that I like to do is to add data labels. So you click on here, you can go to data labels and then you can choose where they appear and it's just saying that it's going to show you the numbers and as I hover over the different options it shows you where it's going to look. So I like to do that because it allows you to see ahead of time what it's going to look like and you don't have to keep clicking back to the menu. So let's choose outside end. That looks good. And now because these are labelled I think we don't really need this axis over here with the numbers. So I'm going to press delete. I've selected this I've just pressed delete on my keyboard and it's gone. I don't think we need these lines either. So I can just select those. Be careful as you click around. Sometimes you might be clicking on something you didn't mean to. Control Z is your friend here that if you do something you didn't mean to, just press undo, which is Control Z, and it will undo what you just did. So I'm going to select the lines here. See, sometimes it's hard to click around. This has happened with me now that I wanted to go back to those lines, but it's just got to be a bit more precise sometimes to make sure you're clicking on the right thing. So again, I'm just going to press delete here again. And this is really starting to have some of our personality to it. And it shows it makes such a difference to make those few little bits of effort to be able to 
give it your own style and your own way of doing things. One thing I like to do as well is to have charts on their own sheets. So the way that you do that is you right click on the chart and you go to this bit here that says move chart. So then it says, do you want to have it in a new sheet or do you want to move it to somewhere in an existing sheet? So it says object in. I want it in a new sheet, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to call it pineapple bars. Press OK and it's automatically moved it to a new sheet. OK, the final one I want to show you is the bar chart. So, sorry, the pie chart. So you'd use a pie chart when you want to show how things make up a whole. So how is the top 10 pineapple producers, how is that split between the different countries? So one thing we could do is actually just go here and change chart type. So you can change chart types once you've already made the chart. So we can go here and we can go pie and we can choose the different types that we like and different styles. And as you hover over or as you click over, it shows you what the different options are. I quite like this donut one where it has the hole in the middle to be able to not have quite so much blocky colors. So I'm gonna press okay on that. And then things you can do here is these different chart elements. One thing that's happened is we don't know which these countries relate to. So if I go to add chart element, and I go data labels, one thing that you can do is these data callouts. So it says, do you want show? Do you want none? Well, none, that's completely meaningless graph. Like I don't know what these colors are. It's very pretty, but what does it actually mean? So I quite like this data callout where it shows the country and the percentage. So I'm gonna click on that. So that's three different types of charts that we have made. We had the line chart, which shows how data changes over time because we had the years and then we had our forecast pineapple demand in the UK over those years. Then we had the bar chart, which if I press undo, we can see it there. You can press undo as many times as you want to get back to what you had. And then I'm gonna press redo, which is control Y to come back to what we had here, which was the pie chart, which shows you parts of a whole. And the bar chart is one that shows you the different categories and categories here is countries for us. So what is your homework this week? Your homework this week is to download this data, have a play along, start to have your own style, start to see what do you like in terms of fonts, in terms of colors, in terms of whether you're showing the numbers at the end, whether you want to label and have a title for the axis or not. There's so much cool different stuff that you can do and I really want you to develop your own style to have a play with it. That's the fun of this. You can have a play with the data, have a play with how you want things to look. It's that moment you've all been waiting for, my excellent tip of the week. And this week I wanted to show you something of how to personalize what you're doing in Excel. So you can actually add pictures, icons and things to your charts. And that's what I wanted to show you. So I've gone to the insert ribbon here, press picture, stock image, and it's all sorts of different things that you can put in here. So I'm going to look at icons. There's also pictures here that you might want to add. I go icons and I can search for pineapple and it will show me the different icons that come up if I am able to spell pineapple properly. And I can click on this, press insert, and you can see that it's put up this little pineapple icon and you can change the color. You can make it red, you can make it orange, and it just adds a little bit of fun to it. Maybe if you were doing spending data, you could put a little icon of money or something just to add a little bit more flavor and personality to your chart. So that was my excellent tip of the week. Come back here next week is going to be week six, the final installment. We're going to look at absolute and relative cell references, a few more formulas, and I'm going to hopefully inspire you to continue your Excel journey and give you a few more resources that you can do that. And then I'm also going to let you know how to get your course certificate for completing the course. See you back here for week six.